I want to have a total of 40 so edit duplicate instantiate duplicate multiple and we'll put 39 here because there is one there already of course and there we go let's deselect all and select with shift there are 40 in total great alright now we want those cubes to follow the curve constrain curve path select the path and there we go now what I need to do is essentially position those cubes appropriately on the path I, w I won't go one by one of course that'll take forever I'll let the computer do the math for me so path percentage here this is what I must modify for each and every one of those cubes there are 40 there they're all at the same spot they're at zero now so what to do uh, here's a trick if you put R open bracket 0 comma 100 close bracket it will set them on the path in a random fashion great that's not what I want to do undo control Z L this time which means linear open bracket 0 comma 100 close bracket there you go that's what I need notice that the computer did all the work for me and that is important tangency I'll enable that I want the cubes to follow the tangency of the curve and up vector is important also because notice that the cubes are um, not rolling appropriately so I want to control the roll on each cube so just enable that on, uh, on the up vector tab here click active great that's perfect let's continue now let's close that for now let's create a body primitive polygon mesh cube let's focus on the right viewport move the cube up here just with the T shortcut select those points move them down with the T shortcut I'll select this one move it as such and let's assume this is a narrow dynamic tank there we go space age great what does that look okay now one thing I forgot to do is to select all those cubes and scale them I want to scale them this way so instead of selecting each one of course here's a trick uh, notice that this one is called cube so I will rename this one purposely click enter instead of cube 40 let's rename it as top All right. now if I go over here and indicate cube select cube with an asterisk at the end enter the asterisk is the wild card it selects all the cubes great and it doesn't select the top so with the, v sh uh, with the X shortcut I can scale those cubes so go ahead and scale them let's scale them slightly bigger than the top great alright so now we have all the cubes selected let's work on the hierarchy actually I will not tell the cube to be the parent of each uh, individual tank uh, tread component here instead I it's important to tell the actual tank uh, top to be the parent of that curve that these individual objects will be following so let's test that as soon as I parent I have a tendency of always testing great everything works okay the top is uh, the child of this curve and these objects will obviously follow the curve because of the constraint great but now I have to tell the tank um, as it's moving front or back I need to tell these individual components to turn uh, on the path right so here goes let's select all the um, cubes so cube with an asterisk and let's locate that the, uh, the constraints on the cubes so selection and notice that all the properties here uh, are common to all the objects that are selected so we'll go into kinematic and locate the constraint it's under constraints path constraint excellent alright 
we'll be playing with the path percentage here. Notice that there is no vol uh, value there and that is obviously normal because the value changes for each and every one since they're not all at the same point. Now what I need to do is tell the uh, value of the path percentage for each one to modify itself according to the motion of this object's Z. Right? There is the Z. The Z is always in blue in translation, right? There we go. So let's use link width, of course. Right click, link width, and usually at this point you select the object that they will follow, that they will be um, relative to, and there it is, top, and in position Z. There we go, and click link. Great, make sure that you see the icon there, excellent, and we can set relative values right off the bat. Alright, so when the, the tank uh, top will be at this position, they will reflect, um, each individual cube will reflect this path percentage. Alright, let's move the tank forward by a little bit and modify the path percentage. Okay. Let's move it a little bit more forward, that's fine. You don't have to be precise at all at this point, because it's very hard to be precise. Now, we moved the, the top forward, now we need to set a value at the path percentage. Obviously, we won't just set any value, any common value, because all the uh, individual components will jump to that value. Let's undo, Control z What I need to say here is respect their value and add or sub subtract. Therefore, let's put something like 33 with a little plus. The plus makes all the difference because it'll tell them accept the value and add 33. Accept the current value and add 33. So click enter. There we go. We notice a slight shift. That's normal. And now click set relative values. All right. Let's test this. Let's uh, close the actual parameter connection editor on the, for the link width here. And we can also close this. We won't be needing it. All right. It's working, but it's going the wrong way. OK. And also, at one point, there's an ease out and an ease in. There we go. And it stops all of a sudden. So we need to correct all this. OK. But we're glad, because at least it's working, right? Good. So let's continue cube asterisk and we want to uh, continue by modifying the function curve that was created by the link width okay link width is uh, essentially an expression which also refers to the um, function curve for each one of these objects so click zero on the keyboard and not on the numeric keypad or essentially I never go through here and it's gonna take me a while to find it. There it is. Animation Editor. Under Animation here. There we go. So zero is the shortcut. Now here is the link width um, curve that's associated with link width. Now select them all and essentially first things first we want to convert this to linear. We don't want the ease in and the ease out. So linear interpolation. Great. Next thing uh, we don't want it to stop suddenly as we can see here. It's stopping right stopping here and it's stopping here so curves gradient extrapolation excellent so you'll notice now that it's in, uh, the curves are infinite great next we will select all the points over here and essentially move them up and down now since it's going the wrong way that tells me that the curve the curves, uh, all the curves profiles should be going the other way. So let's just bring them down. Select all the points by simply selecting them as such and just move them down. So let's test that. Actually, a neat trick here, since I'm going to select another object and I don't want it to deselect all the curves, I will lock them in place. Okay. So as I select this object here, it won't, uh, it won't reflect. Uh, the curve uh, or no curve that's associated uh, associated to this object, and it'll it'll take some time again to actually get these curves. So I lock them in place, and now I can move this back and forth a lot better. But we can tweak it a little bit more. 
Okay, and here goes. Let's bring them lower. 